Hi, this is Mrs. Nelson. Um, I'm going to be showing you today how uh, equivalent fractions actually take up the same amount of space if we use uh, an area model to represent them. So the objective says I can show how two fractions are equivalent using an area model. So show that one third is equivalent to two sixths. So I have an area model here. This larger rectangle around the outside represents my whole. That's one whole. I split it into three equal parts and I shaded one of those and that's one third. If I want to show that a fraction is equivalent, it has to take up the exact same space. So how am I going to take three equal sections and split it into six equal sections? Well, I can do that by drawing a vertical line, um, uh, excuse me, a horizontal line across my fraction or my area model. So when I do this, I've not changed the size of my area model, but I have changed the size of the pieces that are inside. So I can see right here that this one third is now, if I count these up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of the same size. One third is now two sixths. So those are equivalent. They take up the exact same amount of space in my area model, but you can see that I changed the size of the pieces inside of the area model, inside of the whole. Now that I've done that, I can add something like one third and one sixth together. So one third is still that one third of that original section that we had, that purple section. And then one sixth would just be one of these smaller sectors inside. So you can see that when I do that, I get three sixths, one, two, three out of one, two, three, four, five, six that are shaded. But I can also rearrange, decompose and rearrange um, the shape so that they're all in a line like this. And when I do that, I can see that three six actually takes up half of this whole rectangle. So 3 6 is also equivalent to 1 half and I can see that. We're going to look at a few more problems like this so that we can reinforce this idea that equivalent fractions take up the same amount of space if we show them in an area model. So now we want to show that 1 3rd is equivalent to 3 ninths. So again this is 1 3rd that's been shaded, 1 out of 3 parts of my whole rectangle. Now again, I want to split this into um, nine equal size parts. And I could do that by using vertical line segments and split each of these into three smaller sections. But that's going to take um, two, four, six, eight, two, four, six lines to do that. But I can also accomplish that with just two horizontal lines. So if I split it this way and go across horizontally, I've also created nine equal spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine equal parts inside of my whole. And you can see that same section that was one third before is now three ninths because I've changed the size of the pieces that are representing my whole, my whole rectangle. So one third is equivalent to three ninths. And when I do that, when I find an equivalent fraction like that, I can then add a fraction that's also being measured in ninths as well. So I could add something like two ninths. So one third, that purple section, plus two ninths, you can see is one, two, three, four, five ninths. So by converting one third into one, two, three ninths, so one third and three ninths are equivalent I can then add something like 2 ninths to that fraction. Let's convert, uh, or let's show that 1 third is equivalent to 4 twelfths. Again, I could take each one of these sectors and I could split it into four equal parts. But, and I can do that vertically if I wanted to, but I'm going to be more efficient and I'm going to put in some horizontal line segments. So you can see that I've split this into three rows of four. So I have three rows or excuse me, four rows, one, two, three, four, of three. Ah, rows and columns, they can be tricky sometimes. I have one, two, three, four rows that go across, each have three inside of them. So now I've split that into 12 equal parts. So what used to be one third as an equivalent fraction is now four twelfths. I've split the inside of my whole into smaller pieces. That's all I'm doing with equivalent fractions. I'm changing the size of the pieces. So now I have 4 twelfths, and since I have 4 twelfths um, being equivalent to 1 third, I can add something that's also measured in twelfths, something like 5 twelfths. So 1 third, which is the same thing as 4 twelfths, plus 5 twelfths would give me a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 twelfths. 
Now again, I can decompose and rearrange that. I'm going to move a few of these uh, colors around. I'm going to move these two right here so that you can see I moved the purple up here and the gold over here. And now that they're all grouped together, I can see that that takes up one, two, three out of four rows. So nine twelfths by rearranging this area model is uh, equivalent to three fourths. So if I wanted to change three fourths to something measured out of twelfths, it would be nine twelfths. Notice that when I do that, all I'm doing when I change the size of the pieces is I triple the number that I have shaded and I triple the number that I have um, as my total. So three times three is nine, four times three is 12. What did I do there when I multiplied by three, uh, three thirds? I multiplied by one. And we know from the multiplicative identity property that you can multiply anything by one and it won't change the value. So we do that with fractions and we can look at more of that later to, to have a better understanding of that. But that's all we're doing is that we're taking three fourths and multiplying it by a form of one to get nine twelfths. Now let's show that three fourths is equivalent to six eighths. So like I did before, I can just go ahead and cut that into eight pieces instead of four pieces. And you can see that three fourths becomes six eighths. And then I can add something like one eighth to three fourths. So then three fourths or six eighths is equal to, or plus one eighth is equal to seven eighths. Again, 3 fourths being equivalent to 9 twelfths, I can go ahead and split that into 12 equal parts, and then I can add something like 2 twelfths. So 3 fourths plus 2 twelfths is equal to 11 twelfths. 3 fourths being equivalent to 12 sixteenths, again, splitting it to 16 equal parts, I can then add something like 3 fourths to 3 sixteenths, and then I get a total of 15 out of 16 parts shaded. So you can see by using an area model, you can understand more conceptually what's happening with our equivalent fractions. And you can see why you can add something like 3 fourths to 3 sixteenths and get something that seems strange, like 15 sixteenths, but we just converted 3 fourths to sixteenths first by splitting it into 16 equal parts instead of just 4 equal parts. And then we're able to add a fraction like 3 6 sixteenths to get 15 sixteenths. Again, our objectives were that I could use equivalent fractions, or I can show how fractions are equivalent using an area model, and then I can use equivalent fractions to add fractions with unlike denominators. We find that equivalent fraction for 3 fourths, and we can add 3 sixteenths to it. Thanks for watching.